We're full. We think we've made uh, some progress, which I'm sure you know all about already, in reference to our little problem on credentials. And we've had uh, consultation here this morning since 9 o'clock with the chairman of the Credentials Committee, the Governor Lawrence. We've had in the subcommittee chairman, and we've had in uh, Walter Mondale and Congressman Holman, Eddie Weitzel, and of course Tom Finney was over here, Walter, myself, and uh, now we've been in touch with your assistant, Mr. Jenkins, Walter Jenkins, and we call Clark Clifford, and I also called the Speaker of the House. And I'm confident that you had this relayed to you, but we, we thought we at least ought to report directly to you. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Well, the, uh, uh, what uh, as Walter says, and I'll, let, I'll turn him loose here in a minute, what we've tried to do is to preserve the legal uh, prerogatives of the party by uh, what we'd agreed on earlier, namely that the Mississippi regulars are to be seated if they take the they're loyal and they meet the requirements of the call of the convention. Number two, uh, uh, that uh, henceforth the Democratic Party will make a declaration in terms of an open party, uh, that uh, we will uh, establish standards of uh, uh, full participation in the party without regard to race, creed, or color. And since the uh, Freedom Party itself is not a party, but is but a protest movement, and uh, surely cannot be considered a legal entity in a political party manner. It obviously cannot be seated as a party, nor should the state of Mississippi be denied any votes because uh, of the Freedom Party. Uh, therefore, uh, it has been recommended uh, that uh, since this is a protest movement, since it does represent the struggle of the Negro for his right to vote, since he wants to have a vote not only back home in the precinct, uh, in the general elections, but also a vote here in the convention, uh, that we uh, recommend to the convention as a body that uh, two delegates uh, be seated in the convention, not as Mississippians, not as, uh, deduct uh, as deductible from the Mississippi vote, but just two extra votes at large for the chairman of that uh, delegation. Uh, Mr. Henry, Dr. Henry, and for the other man, uh, they, uh, uh, the National Committeeman, as they call him, uh, Reverend Edward King, not Martin Luther, but Edward King, one white and one colored. And that uh, these uh, men uh, be uh, heralded not uh, as delegates uh, from the uh, state of Mississippi, but as an expression of the conscience of the Democratic Party as to the importance of the right to vote, of political participation by all peoples in our country, and that we, uh, in this historic period when we passed a great Civil Rights Act, uh, which uh, establishes a whole new pattern of social conduct in our country, that we take the lead here in our Democratic Party of uh, showing that we mean business and that we are prepared to uh, make uh, official recognition of the all-important right to vote and of active participation in political affairs. Uh, Mr. President? <coughs> Uh, I think that this will go together, and we can uh, avoid a floor fight. We can unify the party behind your leadership, and I think everybody can go home feeling good because what we will have demonstrated is the capability of harmonizing legal problems with our moral obligations. They, not, none of the Southern people can be in any way opposed to this because it gives them the kind of legal basis which they've been fighting for. On the other hand, we do uh, commit the Democratic Party and give historic recognition to the fact that there are some of our citizens who've been denied to date the right to participate as free American citizens in the political structure of the Democratic Party. And I think we can unify. Now, Hubert and I have got a meeting set up at 3.30 with Dr. King and this fellow Henry, and I think we can put this together so we can leave this city, we can get the uh, this credentials committee fight off the television cameras and get the positive image of the Democratic Party on the television cameras, and we can all leave here together united and go back home and do the hard work of winning this election behind your leadership. Uh, Mr. President, we want to make it clear we're not meeting with Dr. Luther King or anybody else to negotiate. We, there is no negotiations. We've taken a position now that at least we're recommending a strong position that we can advocate with honor because we know it's right. And we are about, all we want to do with the men that we'll see at 3.30 is to tell them of the decision that we've made, that we're prepared to move on it, and to ask them to give this serious consideration and to cooperate in the best interest of our country to get the President Lyndon Johnson elected as 
reelected as president of the United States so we can move on with our program. Have you talked to any of their people about this? Yes, we have had some, you know, informal yes. talks because we couldn't formalize it because we hadn't as yet cleared it. Uh, but I am confident that we can reduce the opposition to this to a microscopic faction so that they'll be completely unimportant. Have you talked to anybody that justifies that uh, conclusion? Yes. Well, I think, uh, here's what I think about it. Uh, uh, I think it's a good solution. I think that uh, uh, it has one uh, danger in it, which I think we ought to take. Uh, we Maybe in four years we can uh, do a good enough job where we won't be confronted with it again. Our party's always been... Uh, a group that you could come to with any bellyache of injustice, whether it was a uh, pecan shelling plant that paid four cents an hour or sweatshop wages, or, or whether it was the user's interest rates, or whether it was discrimination to vote, or Ku Klux Klan whipping somebody, and uh, all of these uh, uh, injustices uh, have wound up, and we've symbolized them some way or other in the county or state or national convention at the time and memorial, and that's what the Democratic Party's for, and that's why it was born, and that's why it survives, and that's why it thrives and exists. And long as the poor and the downtrodden and the bended know that they can come to us and be heard, and that's what we're doing. We're hearing them, and we're just saying uh, uh, we passed a law back there in 57 and said that First time in 85 years, everybody's going to have a chance to vote. And we said it again in 60, and we said it again in 64, and then by God, uh, it still hadn't been executed. And we're going to say it again in the convention in 64, and that's about all you're doing is uh, uh, recognizing a symbol. Now, uh, if incidentally, by doing that and stopping this damn foolishness, you can elect a, a, a ticket and pick up four or five seats in the Senate where we got 70 instead of 67 and where we can uh, get some r real uh, unity up there and pick up 20 or 30 in the House, well, then we can do something about this in the next four years. So if you'll just go and get a hold of uh, those people and say to them, for God's sakes, uh, uh, we, we know the we've tasted from the cup of injustice ourselves. But uh, uh, you've had two days here now, and you've done more damn harm than we can undo, and you're going to have a president, you're going to have a vice president, uh, without any question of peradventure of a doubt of any kind that's yours, that, that you believe in, that you trust. You're going to have Congress, and if you just get on here and quit let them say that uh, the extremes have taken over our convention like they took over Goldwater, let us all get out there in the precincts and get these folks to voting. Why, we'll start out next January and and do some do enough about uh, these uh, areas where if we have uh, interests uh, in the form of uh, economic and social and other interests, and uh, we can uh, uh, go in there and send a fellow like uh, Umper down to make a speech now and then and cry with them a little, and we'll. We'll have it where you'll be on some delegations like you own Georgia when you come back here four years from now, but we've done enough now. And you just go and line them up there and let one or two of them bitch a little bit in the, in the committee, but uh, uh, bring it on out there and ram that damn thing through before we, so we don't take all the bloom off of this wonderful platform. Now, I just thought that we had as tough a platform as a person could have on civil rights. We, we put in enforcement. They knocked it out at San Francisco. We went all the way on labor. We went every bit of the way on Medicare and everything. Then the damn New York Times said it's a pallid platform and no good. Well, we're not going to worry about that because we've got a damn good platform. And this, and this show, that this, this thing that we're doing now, Mr. President, will demonstrate one thing, that we're just, but we're not run out of the ballpark. That's we're right. Legal, and we're fair. Well, I think it, it symbolizes uh, uh, that we, we, uh, we're in the business of looking after injustice wherever it rears its ugly head, and we're symbolizing it here, and I see nothing wrong with it, except that ex one thing you got is a precedent. Now, next year, next time, they may come in from Brooklyn or Michigan and say, hell, we got a new Freedom Party here. And well, accepting we're going to 
say that if we make the Democratic Party an open party in every state, don't need any of it. Ought to use the channels of the party. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, that's right. Oh, that's right. Well, when you two fellas get together, you can do anything, and I just go on now and get your crowd to do it. Now, what about uh, uh, Dave Lawrence? What is he? He's, he's enthusiastic about it. We had breakfast this morning where we worked out this proposition, and he's enthusiastic for it. He would have been here when we made this call, but he got, he got called over to his meeting. All right. Now, uh, uh, this thing, uh, Hubert, uh, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a sadistic person, as you well know, and I... Uh, I uh, 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 feel uh, uh, like uh, I, I understand everything. I, I'm just not uh, 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 trying to play coy with anything. I'm trying to play for the interests of uh, of everybody concerned, which I think that we're uh, we're reaching uh, pretty quickly. And since our conversation on the phone, I don't think we need to have any more. And uh, uh, back there two or three weeks ago, a month ago, when uh, Jim Rowe was here and. Uh, you don't have to spell out everything, and uh, uh, so what uh, What uh, you ought to do, you ought to talk to Walter Jenkins sometime today, and uh, Walter, you're going to be down here in the morning? Yeah, I, what, if, what if I come by at 10 o'clock in the morning? That's all right, that's all right, and uh, uh, I don't think I don't think you ought to have this conversation, either one of you ought to let anybody know, just go on and act independently. Don't be acting for Johnson or anybody else. You just act on Ruther and you act on Humphrey and uh, don't have people saying that I'm making you do this. I never heard of it. It's your proposal and the point you. Is, it's our idea. We'll and, it and we'll help unite the party behind and, you. And this is something we worked out at breakfast. And my name's Joe Glutz, and you haven't talked down here because I don't want them to think that I'm trying to uh, go into everything. And you just uh, you just carry it the way you think you ought to because. Uh, um, and we understand each other all right. I'll be, I'll be in touch with you. Don't even tell Walter you talk to me. Don't tell anybody. Just, uh, just don't. You talk to Joe Glutz. That's my name. Goodbye. Bye.